Welcome to Chronic Curiosity, where real people have real conversations, driven by curiosity to discuss this life in hopefully an intriguing way. Social media and the internets have woven their way into our lives and psyche, so we'd like to slow it down and be genuine and enjoy this foreign thing called conversation. Like most of the time, I don't even know what we're going to talk about. You know, we may highlight you know things our guests have going on. Or it may just be us, Tony, Cass, and myself. You know, often our conversations can swing from one topic to the next. Relationships, to conspiracies, mental health, to ancient civilizations, in politics, to aliens. But if you're curious enough, they can all connect. But one thing we'll certainly like to do is to connect with you, the listener, by discussing things that you can connect with and discussing things that make you curious enough that you didn't think you could connect with so we hope you enjoy your time with us and appreciate the time you're spending with us because we understand that that's one thing you can spend but never make more in addition if you do enjoy our show we hope you could take a minute to show your support following and liking our channel on whatever platform you're listening to is greatly appreciated and it doesn't cost you anything except the calories to you know clickety click and remember, share it with a friend. We love growing this network and hearing from everybody. We also have a website that is linked in the description, chronic-curiosity.com. That's a store where you can pick up some fun, curious merchandise, not to mention some of the most comfortable and curious t-shirts ever, as well as a donate button if you just want to help us and support the show. We appreciate your ears and interaction. Thank you once again. Welcome to Chronic Curiosity. Open mind required, raw human interaction, inevitable. And here we go. Yes, I don't know exactly how I want to do this. Okay. But um, I have a handful of books I want to, basically because we mentioned. Kai? Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that we've mentioned on the show. Um, yeah, so Chronic Curiosity Book Club, I guess. Um, I have a handful. Obviously, there's a uh, a stack of them on the table. Hit that overall camera. so we can see it. Look at all its, all its books. These are all the books that I'm currently reading. <laughs> um, so yeah. Only a psycho can have so many books started, in my opinion. There's a lot there. But I, I um, what it was, was I used to... This is where you turn it back. <laughs> so what it was. We have a new helper yeah, today. Yeah, we have a new helper. He's yeah. helping with the, the helping screen. The so. Yeah. Um, but it all goes back to, um, we've talked about him before in the podcast, Naval Ravikant. And I listened to, I think it was a podcast he was on, but I follow him on. Um, he's probably like one of the only people on Twitter that actually says like good stuff. Um, but he had a pod, he was talking on a podcast where he says he doesn't, he doesn't even read full books. He won't read a book from beginning to end. He's so focused on efficiency of time and like devoting his time to stuff where he will read, he says, yeah, I'll read 15 books at a time, but I'll never read the whole thing. He's like, I just read the pieces that I need. So it's like, he's real he has a lot of really interesting ideas um and he's got i think he actually has a podcast out now where he he kind of did this like tweet storm years ago that um he did a bunch of it was like he he's almost like a he's almost like a prophet not prophet but he's like he like writes in like proverbs almost like these little short sentences that just um so he did this like short podcast and it's i think it's at, at most places um it's really interesting to check out about like be basically like increasing your efficiency and productivity and um like moving forward and being successful and it's and he does it in a really interesting way um so when he was talking about that it hit me i was like yeah like because i'm usually when it comes to a book or something like that um i have like a tv show or something whatever however you equate to it a video game or you know a project that people do it's people get so focused like i have to I, I need to finish it from start to finish before i start something else you know, always, always finish what you start. And then before you move on to something else, it's like a, you know, lesson you teach kids, but sometimes you don't necessarily have to do that. 
especially when it comes to like books, I come across a book that's like, it's dry or it's like super complex. And sometimes like my brain just can't do that. So I'm like, well, I can't read any other books because I have to finish this one. So then I started uh, reading multiple books at once. And now I, I think <laughs> it's, if there's a, there are two different kinds of books, you know, like a educational book that's going to somehow, you know, bring um, something to your career or, you know, something you're achieving and then just, uh, you know, a fun fluff book. I get that. Mm. But when they're similar, like, <laughs> my brain will connect the two and then I am confused. And so more power to those that can do that. Um, it is nice to have a book that you can read when you're tired, mm -hmm. put yourself to sleep. But I, yeah, I'm still amazed that you are so invested in some of these. And, but you do pick them up for different times. Mm -hmm. But hmm. So that's kind of what I wanted to touch on because we mentioned a lot of these books in the show and we've mentioned them in different capacities and whatnot. And to me, most of these books are different and they could be considered similar, some of them. But, you know, just to kind of get into it, the first one I wanted to talk about because we've talked about a handful of times and he was a guest on the show. Oh, Mr. Dan Leach. No, right here. There you go. There we go. Mr. Dan Leach. Um, he's been on the podcast. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I would encourage people to check it out. He is a phenomenal person, um, a college professor, and obviously author. Um, got to, I've spent some time with him, and it's just, he, it's a book of short stories. And I am not a short story type of person. It's obviously all fiction. Um, or, yeah, so it's obviously all fiction. Um, but, and I'm, I used to read a lot of fiction. That was like the only like books I did read because I've said it before. I'm not, I was never much of a uh, bookworm necessarily. I liked reading stories and books, but never like, never like I have now. Like there's a long time I went without, I read like one series of books and that was it. It was more of just a, uh, a TV show for my brain, not like necessarily to learn. So, I've kind of veered away from fiction, but this, it was a book that the way he writes in such short little stories, you think, you know, what can I get out of this short little story? And then there's even, I think it was funny. I think about halfway through the book, there's a really longer story compared to the rest of the stories. I don't know. Have you started reading this mm -hmm. at all? It's on my nightstand, but I haven't yet. It's, it's phenomenal. He, he starts out with a, just a, with, a couple stories that are just like five pages long, six pages long. Um, I've never read such, you know, short sections of a story and have some of them hit so hard. Um, it's Tony's it's, read it, correct? Yeah, multiple Tony, yeah, times. Tony's read it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things where you could read it multiple times and it's just the way he writes it. It really, it surprises me because you're reading it. You're like, okay, like this is just some random story. Like, it does. He doesn't come off as a good writer. Like he, it doesn't like come off as like really like striking and really gripping you. And then there'll be like one paragraph, or there'll be like literally. I I sent him an email. I was when I was reading through this, and about halfway through the book, there's this really long story compared to the rest of his stories. And the whole time I'm thinking, man, this story is just dragging. Like Dan, you were really you were really hitting me in the beginning of this book, but bro, I'm having a hard time getting through this this one story and it came all the way down to like literally like the last sentence of the story. And I felt like I got hit with a baseball bat and it just made that everything else that came before that, just like, whoa, like just, whoa. So he does that. And that's like, that's really neat. It's not like a, you know, reading like Stephen King or something like that, where the whole book is riveting. Like it's interesting. And you know, he's, that's why he's a famous author author because of that. But I've never read something like that where like half the time I'm like, what is this? And you get to the end. And it's like the one little sentence, like the, just the way it's worded. It just, oof. so I would encourage people to go out and see that one or read this one. Cause it's not only cause he's a good dude, but you know, it's a pretty interesting book and pretty awesome. If you're not watching this, it's floods and fires. Yes. Sorry. I forgot to say it. Thank you. Floods and fires. By Dan Leach. Um, I think you can get it on Amazon and other places like that too. So, my bad. But we did talk about it in the podcast. So, you have to go listen to that. Um, 
the next one um well completely differently like you said i don't have this one so th this one i read um on like kindle essentially so i don't have the actual book but i'll put it up a picture of it when we you know when we have that and maybe we'll just link all of these and just have this as like an outstanding podcast for books um since we've talked about it a bunch in the show um and there's some more content that'll be coming out kind of around it but the bitcoin standard um i remember that was when the first time yeah it, it's a, so it's called the bitcoin standard but it's if anybody that wants to learn about bitcoin or the idea of it it's a great book but also on top of it um, because i like to see many different depths of things um, it really discusses um, like monetary systems in a really interesting way you know a lot of people hear that and go well that sounds terrible like that sounds really boring but um the bitcoin standard by uh Seyfedin Amus, he is a austrian fellow um super intelligent and the way he connects these ideas and explains them and kind of spells them out it's really interesting it's really neat he goes through like the history of like some different types of monetary systems and like what money really is and he really kind of lays out bitcoin for people and why it's it's not just i've said it a bunch of times to me bitcoins it's not money it's not like cryptocurrencies like everybody talks about it's something completely different like i actually heard a uh another guy um matthew cratter who i've mentioned on the show before he does a like he has a youtube channel he actually has some books out there if people are interested in um learning some more about like investment and the stock market and he but he also does a lot of bitcoin stuff too um his name is matthew cratter with trader university um they kind of tie in together about how they view bitcoin and monetary systems and how you know these monetary systems are just so corrupt because it's all the central bank and bankers and governments and everybody just screwing with things um and doing it for their own benefit but they look at like he he was mentioned the other day i listened to one of his episodes or whatever where he was talking about how bitcoin to him was like a uh um a beautiful a beautiful like piece of music that was written like this timeless thing like that he's like i don't believe <laughs> i'm paraphrasing him now in my own words he's basically saying i don't believe like aliens gave it to us but he's like if there were such thing as as aliens or like people that came down like and were messing with our culture it would not surprise me one bit if it came from aliens the way bitcoin is actually structured and written and all these different things um but the bitcoin standard really kind of lays all those things out and how humans essentially just destroy monetary systems throughout history and this is something different potentially that we could use if you know governments would allow that to happen, which I'm probably not going to want that either, you know, because governments. But so that's a little different. Um, also, one that I don't have that we've discussed is um, 1984, written by George Orwell. So this book got a lot of, I don't know how to say it, publicity, publicity. Uh, this last year, because there are a lot of people talking about how censorship and all these different things was very 1984-ish, or if you've ever heard the term, very Orwellian. That's where these terms come from. So George Orwell, who wrote this book in 1949, it was set in the year 1984, obviously, so he was looking, it was like a futuristic book in 1949. Um, but the way that he writes this story and it's a fiction story it's it takes a little bit to get into because you have like you have to remember like hey this book was written in 49 you know and it takes a little bit getting into but he really goes into and discusses the you know the potential of censorship and complete government control and you know how you know propaganda and all these different things are so controlling of a society and it but the government their government at the time kind of pushes it off as like utopianism like we supply everything you need like we you don't need like you never want for anything because we take care of you and we're 
the best civilization there ever was. And I'm like, and now it's like, there's a lot of parallels that people can see with that book, 1984 and the things that George Orwell talks about and things that are happening today, particularly around the world. Um, so that's an excellent book to read. It was one of those that like, I heard, I've heard about it, but I heard people talking about it. I'm like, well, I suppose this is probably a book I should read. Um, and it sounds an awful lot like North Korea. We've discussed, um, Yon Mead Parks, uh, story, I guess, uh, a couple times on the show. And I have a book here somewhere. Mm, this is in a stack that I, um, currently reading. Where is it? Oh, I thought I had it down here. No, hmm. I have it somewhere. I must've left it, uh, upstairs. Oh, no, I did. Just kidding. It's right here. Boom. All these books. There you go. So you me park. Um, in order to live is one that I am currently reading. Um, we've mentioned a couple of times I've put it out there on the Instagram and whatnot and Facebook or all the show stuff that, you know, she has discussions with, um, Lex Friedman, Joe Rogan, uh, Jordan Pearson, a bunch of other people. But, uh, if you don't care for any of those characters, she has her own book out, which, um, is obviously in much more detail in the conversations. I'm not uh, extremely far into it yet, but so far it is, it's pretty rough. Um, just really, you know, trying rough to, because of her experience, not rough as yeah, in, no, yeah, just her, yeah, the story. Properly. Yeah, no, it's no, yeah, it's not rough as in like, cause she does have an accent. She, it was, you know, we've talked about it on the show, but she was a North Korean defector at the age of 13, if I remember correctly. And she had a journey that she, you know, real long story, but it's super harrowing and um, parts are extremely disturbing on, you know, what she went through. Um, but she went through China, through Mongolia to South Korea, and then finally was able to get to the United States and is here telling her story, essentially, you know, and not living in fear because she, she's talked about it where basically like if she were at the wrong place at the wrong time, like, they would kill her just because the story she's telling. Um, but that's a pretty, uh, it's one of those stories I feel like we need to hear because tying it into 1984, you know, the whole conversation, like, Oh, well, it's the guy's just a, you know, a fiction writer, like whatever. Like, but it, when you read it along with in order to live by on park, it's like, Oh, like, no, these things exist. Like that's like where these ideas come from because you know, there are governments and places around the world where we can't even fathom what's going on. Um, so I think that that one's an important one for people that, you know, want to expand their perspective on the world and just not to be, uh, not to be read when you're don't want to be put in a, a downer mood though, because it's, um, you know, it's, it's true stories that are brutal. Um, and what she's had to go through. So, yeah. Um, so these, see, all these books are different. I got Bitcoin. I got true stories. I got fiction stories. Well, um, this next one that you have, well, it's not your next one, but it was on top of here. When I listened to the Lex podcast with her, I wrote this book down. Oh, Animal, animal Farm? Yes, Animal Farm, because they mentioned it and they, Lex and Yamin are obviously very different, but they both mentioned the impact that this book had on them coming from completely different, you know, lifestyles and whatnot. And it was what, like two weeks later and there it was on our table. So you had, you had purchased it and I had wrote it down. I don't know if we had mentioned that or not. And if you told me you had bought it, but I, it is a book that I wrote down to dive into that I haven't yet. So there you go. Well, it's here. here it so. We'll just go ahead and talk about this one, Animal Farm. Um, it's super small book. Um, you know the writing is small, and different, but it's uh, it's another Orwell book. Um, you know he is Tony has joked about. I don't know Tony jokes about it with me about him being a time traveler and whatever. Um, but when you read it's when you read his work, it's hard not to pull parallels that you know this guy's writing in you know the 1940s 
and you you look at stuff that's some stuff that goes on it's like this guy was like you know predicting the future um and but at the same time when you tied in with yon me park um and lex friedman who came from russia he wasn't like we as a, a united statesian um because i hate using the word american because like canadians are technically americans and brazilians are technically americans because they're south america like i don't know um but someone coming from the united states has a hard time understanding really what's going on in you know places like russia throughout history or you know south korea or china um so we look at some of his writing and go oh this guy's like predicting the future and applying it to our situation now which it can be applied to different situations now with censorship and all these different things but you know i don't know as much as i should obviously like i said i'm just starting to read books again in my 30s um but maybe he just understood and talked to people from these places and wrote stories that kind of reflected you know what they lived through um so yeah this one is i've heard you know i think even dan leach mentioned animal farm on the podcast we did so it's a, a short book but it you know even halfway through you can see it's it's basically a story about this farm that these animals kind of overthrew the farmers because they wanted a a better life and then next thing you know the animals are now having to do all the work to survive and it's you know it's not as utopian as as they thought it was going to be because it's kind of that whole the grass is always green on the other side but and then there comes out these rulers that end up being just as bad as the humans were and it's but that's why they talk about it. they realized you know going through you know their situations and where they were coming from that like it really speaks to you know life in general um you know grass is not always green on the other side and if we allow you know the darkness of what humans can be then that's what we're gonna get um but yeah so animal farm is another one that's uh on the on the list to read um those are or orwell and yon me parker some they're hard to not hard but it's just sometimes realizing that like when you read this read these stories one you get like a bit of appreciation well, i would hope people would get a bit of appreciation for where we're at and how you know the country that we live in but at the same time it's like you know there's these people around the world that do not or have not or probably will not ever know what freedom and different things like that are so yes um on a lighter note a book that i have read we have talked about before neil degrasse tyson's book i will disagree with him on his outlook on aliens um but astrophysics for people in a hurry which is somewhat um ironic maybe um but it is it's a super neat book that he basically goes through the creation of the universe and talks about physics and all these really really deep concepts but um if anyone's ever heard neil degrasse tyson talk he he talks in a way that is interesting and it it's entertaining and he is able to break down really complex topics and ideas uh so dumb dumbs like me can understand what he's saying um but it's you know not not a huge long read um but it's it's super interesting if you have you know any type of interest in science and whatnot even if you don't um it's a good book that you can it kind of also puts a different perspective on life um that when you look up at the stars and realize the you know infinite capabilities of the universe and it just goes on forever and all these different things that we think we know um it puts a different perspective on it as well so this i would highly suggest old neil degrasse tyson's uh, astrophysics for people in a hurry because it can kind of give you that even broader spectrum of you know country to country but the universe is a uh, it's a big place i remember making fun of you for reading that book and one of my favorite yoga teachers said give it a chance 
read it. She said she loves it. And she has quite a few um, sections highlighted that she often will bring back into her class at either the start or the the end, which kind of helps set like a an intention or, you know, something, the start of a class. And she said to give it a try that it's it's good. I have not yet. But yeah, it's it's super easy to read. It's not as complex or you know crazy as one might think. Um, there are some words in there that are, you know, you might want to have Google at the ready when you, <laughs> when you read them. A Tony, you need a yeah, Tony or a to Tony. Yeah. <laughs> define yeah. your words. Yeah, um, but it's uh, it's 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 a really good book for anybody. That's any of these books. I guess the idea of this is any of these books that so far that I'm talking about are books that anybody can read, um, and they, and I think should read. Um, it's not you know to be whatever i don't even know the word but it's just books that can really impact perspective and you know i'm not asking people to go out and you know be a you know protest in the streets for north koreans uh freedom uh, which i feel like there probably should be um but just to get a perspective whether it be from person to person dealing with somebody else uh, recognizing that people are different, people's backgrounds are different, people's situations are different, um, you know, whether it be your neighbor or across the world, um, or kind of putting some perspective on your own life when it comes to understanding the vastness of the universe. You know, I've said it before that one of the biggest impacts that I had, something that I realized was when the, I realized the universe doesn't give a shit about me and is, and I didn't matter when it came to the, the whole, you know, the universe and how many people have been here and how many, how much time has elapsed and people come and go and all these things. But when you realize, you know, it made me, instead of being nihilistic, go, Oh, now I can make something matter, whatever I want. Like, I don't have to, you know, do this, that, whatever I can make something that matters. So just one of those perspective things across the board. So I agree. I think this would be a good one. There are a lot of good ones in here. Um, on that same note, one that I have not finished yet, which is interesting. Um, this one's a little harder, but I'll, so I'll talk about it briefly. Um, maybe he is a phenom- He's really interesting for me. If anybody likes science and physics and um, quantum mechanics and different stuff like that, um, he's very interesting as a podcast person. Um, but Brian Green, he is a physicist as well, um, in his book until the end of time, um, it's a little deeper, it's much deeper than, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson's book, uh, not for the faint of heart. It's not like, it doesn't read like a textbook. He has some really cool concepts, but you have to either really enjoy physics or whatever um or the science aspect of it and really kind of trying to exercise your mind um but he is a phenomenal podcast listener or listen he he's really talks about some neat stuff too along the science end of things um you okay over there you getting bored yet okay um I'll say this one. Um if it, this this is one that I've read a little bit too. This is this is exactly I guess this this is exact a good perfect example of a Naval Ravikant book that I can just pick up every once in a while and lead a little read a little um section from. Um if anybody's familiar um, with the Bible, this is not it. it. Has nothing to do with it. But if you're familiar with Proverbs from the Bible, it reads much like that. Small sections, little chapters. Um, some are really short. Some are a little longer. Um, but the book Beyond Good and Evil by Friedrich Nietzsche. He is a German philosopher that lived back in the late 1800s. Um, so, and it's deep. It's super deep. And some of the words he uses are. Um, I don't know if they're just too big for me to understand or if it's just the, you know, verbiage and the language has changed or it's from the, cause it's translated and, um, but it's every once in a while you pick it up and it's like, Oh, 
like you can pull something that really deep out of what he's going because he he's going deep. But it's another little interesting um, book to have on the shelf to occasionally read. Um, I haven't fully read this one yet, David Chang to eat a peach, but Matt Shanlin when he was on the show suggested it to us. It's a it's an easy it's an easy super easy read. It's it's like a memoir. Um, for people who don't know David Chang, he's like a famous chef. Um, but basically worked really hard and he was said basically says he was terrible at being a chef and being a cook, but he just loved doing it so much. He just kept grinding. So, um, I'm only like a quarter way into this one, but it's good. It's just a light kind of when you don't want to read about, you know, quantum physics. Quant- quantum physics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's one of those, like you can just read at bedtime and like, it's just a guy telling a story about how he basically so far at this point, it's, he's succeeded because he was just too stupid to give up essentially. And he basically says all that. Um, so yes. Um, when I have read all the way through and this was actually another suggestion from a person that came on the show. Um, this was a suggestion from, um, well, Oh, Steve. Um, it's, it's actually, it's a, not actually, but it, it's a, it's like a memoir type, um, book. It, this is a professor who I think he was diagnosed with like stage four pancreatic cancer, something like that. Um, and it's called the last lecture lessons in living by Randy Posh. Um, and it was essentially he uh found out he had cancer and was tells the story about how that happened and kind of a little bit of what he was going through but how he wanted to be able to give this last lecture and so it's kind of a story about him doing that and then kind of the life lessons that he learned going along the way um this is a super easy read it reads super fast um but you may want to keep a box of tissues handy when reading it because obviously guy's writing a book as he knows he's dying with a wife and two kids. Um so and he you know, he writes writes it well and he uh yeah, it's pretty uh it can be pretty heart wrenching at times, but it's a it's a good one. Also, it's a good one to get some life perspective on. Um the other ones, I, oh, I haven't read. We've talked about all Wim Hof on the show. I'm about halfway through that one. Wim, the Wim Hof method, activate your full human potential. Um, I, like I said, I have not read this one at all. I am waiting for you to get done with it. And, you know, I'm, I got to have enough on my, uh, on my plate as of right now for books. So this is one that I was talking about how, you know, you have like a information type book and then you have you know, like your smut book that you can read that really doesn't involve any, um, (laughs) yeah, yeah, which I highly recommend. Um, but this book is really, really cool. There's definitely a, he's very simple in his mindset, but he's very complex with his methods. I mean, his methods are simple, but the research, that he has been involved in is super in depth and his just his mind is blown because he just discovered that hey i i feel really good when i'm by myself and i am submerged in ice cold water and i learned how to breathe through that and it's super simple to him but people all around the world are just amazed by what he can accomplish um through his breathing and his mindset, he can increase his own body temperature after being submerged in ice water. Like, it's just, it's really, really cool. Um, He discusses his breathing methods in depth and ways to just improve your body that don't involve anything other than yourself. So it's a good one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Andy Poulton mentioned this on the last podcast yes oh he did yeah he He, um takes a cold shower every evening now um after his his warm shower so there you go tony's allowed to come in giving him directions no we're just doing i was just starting to uh record some 
Um, Happy birthday, bro. Oh, oh, thanks, man. Now that's a birthday gift. Thanks, brother. Some books. Yeah, we're just kind of, like I said, I wanted to do some, start putting stuff out for the stories and whatnot. So, recording some, uh, some just mentions of books and whatnot and different things that go along. With Kai us. wanted to help, so, yeah, you know, so here we are. Making content. Um, I, of course, had to start out with uh, the Dan Leach book and talk about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I have a couple. A couple more. I know. Oh yeah, we can move this around. Yeah, we don't. Oh, let me turn this off too, so it's on. Um, I wish I, I was. I almost asked you to bring it so I could get a picture of it. Um, but another book that we've talked about on the show, um, the Blood Meridian, that you said is your your go to. Oh, I was in my my other vehicle. Oh, you actually have. Yeah, no, I usually yeah. have it on me. Um, I know you've talked about it before, but what is it about Blood Meridian that really is your like hey this is why you should read this or this is why i read this Enjoy. oh it is just a very oh, just... Oh, that's weird why that camera is so scooted over yeah and it's like cut off a little bit there yeah i'll fix it right now that's better yeah there we go that looks like normal no that's weird good yeah sorry no you're good um i just like that book because there's some people would say a gratuitous amount of violence in there, but it's necessary violence. And it deals with death. Uh, and something McCarthy said, uh, Cormac McCarthy, the author, that he doesn't understand like any author or book that doesn't deal with death. Um, and I think by dealing with death, like you bring us closer to life, if you will. Um, and so for me, that's kind of what it's about. Plus the um, antagonist of the book is just incredible. Uh, Judge Holden. Um, and the language is pretty ridiculous. So McCarthy takes liberties and kind of creates his own neologisms or words that he made up. Um, he's not a fan of punctuation, which oddly <laughs> enough, I kind of enjoy, even though sometimes you're reading it, you're like, wait, should there have been a comma there? Like if someone's speaking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's just this, this journey through a wasteland. Um, and, you know, it's, the protagonist doesn't even have a name. He's just called the kid. And I feel like that could be, you know, that could be anyone just by calling him the kid. You're like, Oh wow, that could, that could be me. Um, and he goes through all this crazy stuff in life and joins up with these, you know, different marauding bands that hunt Indians or native Americans. And, and I just like native American history. Uh, so that's another element that plays in there, but it is just a very interesting book. There's a lot of, uh, allegory in there. Um, you know, there's just a bunch of hidden meanings. Uh, he learned to speak Spanish for this book. So you kind of have to brush up on your Spanish a little bit if you want to know what's actually going on. Mm. So there's just yeah. a lot of layers. There's not a ton of Spanish in it. No, no. But there is some. There is some. There's just a lot of layers to this book, and it, it gets you thinking. And I always like McCarthy's endings, too, because there's some ambiguity there, and you're kind of like, hmm, well, what what just happened? And Dan and I have been arguing about the end of that book for, for a while. Not arguing, <laughs> but discussing it for a while. Um, but yeah, I, I just, that's, those are kind of the reasons why I truly enjoy it. Perfect. Speaking of, maybe not that, but I have, the, I've got this one too. I don't know if you've ever heard of this one, Black Elk Speaks. So Black Elk Speaks is a book by, uh, John Neinhardt. Um, I have not read this at all. I haven't even started this one yet. This one, I, I obviously have enough that I've started. Um, so I didn't want to start anymore, but I've heard that this is a phenomenal, um, kind of book that the author put together as he actually spent a ton of time with um a a healer um from this tribe and he basically kind of tells his story through you know through the author so should be super super interesting. I've heard it's a phenomenal book but cool haven't read that one yet um um, there's a couple other random ones that I've been reading. Um, the how to be an anti-racist by Ibram X. Kendi. I've mentioned that one on the show before. Um, that is, he has an interesting, uh, um, look on the race topic. Um, I do not agree with a lot of the stuff he says, but I do agree with a lot of the other stuff he says. Um, but he was, 
my biggest problem with probably Ibram Kendi is we've talked about it is that he he's very much at the forefront of changing definitions of words and while i can agree to and that the lang- language you know evolves through history um you can't change a definition of the word and then argue that word and its meanings and everything surrounding it when with people who haven't agreed to change the definition with you and call them wrong. It sounds like you're just making up your own rules as you go. Right. So that that's my biggest problem with him is it's like, so man, like you're saying he should go into politics. Is that what <laughs> that's exactly, yeah. He basically is there, but it is, if nothing else, it's one of those books that it can challenge the way you think. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. I think um, to challenge the way you think on that note, Another one that's been sitting on the shelf, um, The Anarchist Handbook, not Cookbook, Handbook, <laughs> um, by Michael Malice, who this, the first, have you ever heard any podcast or anything with Michael Malice on? I know he's been on Rogan a bunch. He's been, he's friends with Lex Friedman quite a bit. He is another, um, his family came from Russia. Um, he's super smart. And when he, when you hear him talk or you hear him joke around, he doesn't sound like, he sounds just kind of like a giddy jackass. But when he starts talking about complex topics and he's a self-proclaimed anarchist, um, which it doesn't sound like what most people think, um, but it's interesting to, to check out. But he uses words and stuff that's – he's a lot smarter than me. So um, – but I think two more real quick while we're talking about them. We've talked about old Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life. Um, a lot of people don't like him. But – you can't deny some of his stuff. Um, he has good rules. You know, I have that shirt. It was, it was a clean your room and tell the truth. Like the crab, or the lobster. Yeah. One. The lobster one. Yeah. So I think, you know, you can disagree with some of his stance on things and how he, you know, but you can't, to me, you can't disagree on how articulate he is and how well he speaks about his arguments and, you know, cleaning your room and telling the truth. I feel like are, Probably two pretty important things. Um, and then I also started, I, I started reading this one. This is um, Breaking the news, news by Alex Marlowe, who is editor-in-chief at Breitbart, which obviously Breitbart is, can probably be considered you know pretty hard right-leaning. Um, but it is an interesting book. He talks about essentially the breakdown of um, mass media in mainstream media during 2020 and before. And he gives references to all of his claims that he's giving. So like literally, I think like the last quarter of the book is references to everything he's claiming. So it's not like a chock full of support basically. Yeah. So, you know, you can disagree or agree with Breitbart news and what they do, but, um, and it is, it's even a little conservative heavy reading it, but it's hard to disagree with, references and the facts at least that he's talking around obviously the way he the way it's written it's very like i said it's very right-leaning and very conservative which is fine um you can disagree with that but you can't disagree with the core of what he's talking about which when i look at that that's what scares me some of those things where you have to look at the core and if the core of what's actually happening scares you it, it shouldn't matter who's spinning what around it we should be considered about the core of that. So you have any, any other books that you would suggest Cass, Tony? I, you can think about that. I will say, obviously a lot of these books are very, um, nonfiction as I've gotten into recently. Um, but if somebody wants a good fiction book to read at night when you don't feel like reading about quantum mechanics or politics or, you know, history or anything like that. Um, I'm a huge fan of the dark tower, Stephen King. I've read that. It's like eight books long. It's probably like almost as much as all of this. And I've read that twice. That's a good fun. Have you ever read that one, Tony? You would like that one. I have not read that. one. You might like that. It's kind of, it's not quite as McCormick ish, but it's a, about a guy who basically travels through time. And he's like, it's like an old Western meets like, 
it's like I don't know sci-fi. It's Stephen King, but it's like it started. It's like this guy. It's like based around this old western guy. Um, it, it has a really interesting twist at the end that you could also it leaves you with a little bit of ambiguity. Um, one of the books I did mention, it, it was I think it was early on, but it's a, it's an awesome one, and I'll bring it over so you can read it. It's called Smoking Ears and Screaming Teeth. It's by a guy named Trevor Norton. I think he's a he's a scientist. Um, and it says it's a celebration of the great eccentrics who have performed dangerous experiments on themselves for the benefit of humankind. Who? Like dude. that guy who is cleaning the, the particle yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, he, dude, I don't think he didn't do it on purpose. But. It is awesome, man. Like it, it literally tells these stories about the first dude to like come up with the heart catheterization and he cats himself. Ooh, jeez. Um, or like Chuck Yeager, like in the planes breaking the, the Oh right. Sp- yeah. Um Dude's going down in submarines, first people to mess around with radioactive material, like crazy stuff that you're just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, like I, I saw that there was a, there was a movie about the woman that f- discovered, was it, was it radioactive isotopes or something like that? You're talking about Marie Curie? Yeah. And like, they it's like, well, it's one of those things where you don't realize how dangerous it is until you're like five you, years you into it, it and yeah. you're like. You have all these cancers and stuff. Your you're like, hair's what the falling out. And... Yeah. But hey, more power to you, right? Science is not always safe. I think they talked about like the, the uh, luminescent watches and they used to use that radioactive material so you could see the dials and the women would paint them by hand. Oh, jeez. That sounds dangerous. Yeah. Now, yeah. now we realize how dangerous that is. Yeah. Um, cool. That's wild. Anything else? No, no additional comments on my ridiculous book collection. No, no I like it. I mean, I'm not going to read some of those, but a couple are on my list. I just think it's cool that we have guests on that are speaking to different books or when there's um, one book that gets brought up by two different people, you know, it's there's something there. So it's just nice to have, you know. To read it if you are curious and you're wanting to um, get to know people better finding out what books have either made an impact on their life or they just really enjoy reading i think that's a really good way to get to know somebody so here yeah. we are very true and broaden your horizons um, cool awesome 